I was not going to do a video today, but it's not even NBA trade season, but I guess it is NBA trade season because the Grizzlies and the Pelicans have just made a massive trade ahead of the NBA trade deadline. And being a Grizzlies fan, you know, I said I got to do a video on this. Jonas Valanciunas going to the Pelicans, Grizzlies getting back Eric Bledsoe and Steven Adams, but... There are draft picks involved. The uh, Grizzlies moving up to pick number 10 from pick number 17. Uh, also getting, uh, also swapping second round picks. Number 40, now going to Memphis. Number 51, along with the number 17 pick. Going to, to uh, New Orleans, along with next year's protected Lakers pick that New Orleans has as a result of the Anthony Davis trade. Okay, I'm, I'm, I just uh, read this news a couple minutes ago. Um, I, uh, I was doing re actual regular work, my, my 9 to 5. I was like, hey, let me go on to Real GM for a second, check out if there's any updates. Boom, right there at the top of the page on Real GM, uh, Jonas Valanciunas traded to Memphis. Grizzlies send Jonas Valanciunas, number 17 to Pelicans. For number 10, Steven Adams and Eric Bledsoe. Uh, my first thoughts on this, I'm really bummed to be losing Steven Adams because <sighs> Steven at Jonas Valanciunas. I, <laughs> I'm already talking like Steven Adams is already on the team. I guess he is now. Really bummed to be uh, losing Jonas Valanciunas because this guy, his uh, double doubles were a thing of beauty. This guy could get like 20 and 20 in his sleep, it seems like. He had a great uh, synergy with Ja Morant. Um, and it was also really helpful to have Jonas on the team because Jaron Jackson Jr. is not ready to play center full time. He can do spot minutes, of course, but it was good to have Jonas there to uh, take the uh, the brunt of the load at center. Um, Steven Adams uh, will be interesting in a Grizzlies uniform. Grizzly Adams, if you will. Um, to be honest, the uh, the Memphis fans really remember Stephen Adams as the guy who, when Oklahoma City and the Grizzlies were in the playoffs against each other a few years back, back when they had Zach Randolph, Stephen Adams kind of baited Zach Randolph into kind of elbowing, punching, whatever. Uh, Zebo gets suspended for Game Seven. Thunder they go on to win the series. So that's something that. Whenever I see Steven Adams uh, and his uh, Aquaman-esque face, that's kind of what I think about. So hope, hopefully I grow to love Steven Adams. Uh, Eric Bledsoe was actually uh, a target of the University of Memphis before he ended up going to Kentucky that year. That was the year that John Kai Perry left the University of Memphis to head to Kentucky as well. So he was a target for the Tigers. Uh, he's from Alabama, so he's a guy from the South. I, I don't see Bledsoe staying long in Memphis. There's already reports that the Grizzlies are looking to move up even higher in the draft. Um, Bledsoe is essentially on expiring contract. Uh, only $3 million this not this coming season, but $3 million the year after is guaranteed, so essentially an expiring contract. He should be fairly easy to move. Steven Adams, I... I'm not looking right now, but I think like the next three years has about 10 to 12 million per year. So this says to me, if the Grizzlies stay at number 10, I think guys that they are targeting would be uh, Moses Moody, James Booknight, if he happens to fall, <clears throat> perhaps uh, Alperin Shingoon, maybe. Uh, maybe a modern day Jonas. Uh, I've been getting uh, Demata Sabonis comparisons to him. So he could be an option. Uh, you know, there's there's been talk that they're interested in, 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 in Chris Duarte. Number 10 is way too high for Duarte. I think maybe even 17 is more his range. Um, I think this this knocks out any talk of Trey Murphy the third going to Memphis. Number 10 is way too high for him. Um, I've heard Josh Giddy as a potential. I don't know why you would want another point guard on the team. He would be playing backup, and you have Tyus Jones. Uh, another wrinkle to this, this pretty much guarantees that the Grizzlies will not be picking up the player option on Justice Winslow 
or uh, the, sorry, the team option on Justice Winslow for about $13 million. So that adds Justice Winslow to the uh, 2021 free agency pool. So that's another interesting wrinkle. Uh, for the Pelicans, I love this move for them in terms of, the, of in terms of getting Jonas and getting off the the contracts of Stephen Adams and Eric Bledsoe. Jonas only has one more year left on his deal at about 15, 16 million. Uh, I do wonder what the spacing will be like with both him and Zion down low together. I see Jonas as as just a better version of Stephen Adams. Uh, like I said before, his rebounding is insane. His field goal percentage right by the hoop is really good. Um, he can, I wouldn't say playmake, but he can find an open guy every now and then. He's good for about one, maybe two, three pointers a game, always at right at the top of the key. And New Orleans fans will like this. He always does like a pump fake to see if he can get the guy off balance. Sometimes he'll do his pump fake, drive past him. Sometimes he'll do his pump fake, shoot the three anyway. Uh, so that's always fun. But yeah, I am gonna miss Jonas. Uh, I had, you know, I had followed him a little bit before the Mark Gasol trade, but just seeing the type of player that he actually was and the type of player he, he was able to become in Memphis. Uh, really fun to see. He's not the type of guy who you can play in the playoffs a whole lot due to his defensive liabilities. But, uh, I mean, he he can average easily 16 and 10, uh, 15, and, 15 and 9, 15 and 11 next year with the Pelicans. Uh, so that's that's going to be interesting to uh, to track. Uh, so yeah, if the Grizzlies are able to move up from that 10th pick, which is what the rumor is, I think, guys, they would be going for, uh, again, James Booknight. Uh, I know Oklahoma City is very interested in him. Uh, I've also heard Jonathan Kuminga as an option. That would that would be amazing. This says to me that the Grizzlies are trying to move up somewhere uh, probably, I would think, top five with this with this pick and or if with any future future trades move up to top five because if Oklahoma City is interested in book night uh then that would say to me that they could get book night at five uh maybe they go to maybe they try to trade with Golden State for number seven uh if that's the case they could probably you you would have either book night or Kaminga at number seven assuming uh, Barnes, Green, Mobley, Cunningham, and Suggs are all top five. So it's crazy. Lots, to, lots to monitor. Lots to track. Uh, and guys, I, I think that's all I have to say on it right now. But uh, appreciate uh, appreciate you tuning in. Make sure you like the channel, uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And uh, I'm hoping I can get another uh, mock draft out to you guys before Thursday. But, you know, life gets in the way sometimes. But hoping I can do that. Make sure you check out my 60-pick mock if you haven't already. And, yeah, I'm just going to soak in this news. Uh, read about, uh, you know, the fit. Read about some contract situations with uh, with Steven Adams, Bledsoe. Kind of readjust my lineups for, for next year. And uh, keep having... Woj on uh, on refresh on the old uh, Twitter feed. All right, guys. Uh, happy draft week, and I'll catch you next time.